welcome to the next part. So, real quick, I just want to go over some quick line refresher stuff. We have two phones side by side, they both have the same line appearances, so let's hit line one here and you'll see that it goes off hook here, and line two here and you'll see that we get an icon there. You'll notice that on the 7208 here, we just have the triangles here, over here on the, I'm gonna go ahead and mute that, over here on the 73, uh, whatever the fuck it is. Oh my god. On the 7324, you'll see that the line indicators kind of have an off hook status there. And you'll notice that if I put it on hold, the little icon changes. The receiver's now on the ground. And right there, it's put a boom, and then when you hang up, it's good. Um, on the 7208 phone over here, it's just a little triangle. It doesn't seem to have the extended indicator thing enabled of any sort, so. You'll notice that when... <sighs> Bitch. I'm going to temporarily map the status of this phone over to this button here, so I'm going to do feature star 2 for an internal auto dial, I'm going to hit the button, and I'm going to say 306 for Montel. And now if I pick up this phone, you should see that it goes off hook over there. Which is magical, because the next thing I'm going to show you is Do Not Disturb. Do Not Disturb makes it so that you don't have to take your phone off the hook if you don't want to be disturbed. Because in the North Star system, taking your phone off the hook doesn't do shit. If you had an old analog phone, like this, in the old days, if you didn't want it to ring, you'd do that. Because the phone can't ring when it's off the hook. It literally cannot ring. The voltage drop, in order, to ring the, in order to ring the bell in the phone, or in an electronic phone, in order to trigger the phone ringing, you have to send a very specific frequency of 110, 120 volts down the line, and the only way that that circuit is complete is if the phone is on the hook. If the phone is off the hook, you're sending that voltage into the receiver. So the problem is, is that in the old days, you take your phone off the hook, then you had things like, you know, it would make an instant busy signal, then you have your call waiting, which you'll still have a busy signal because after a while, your phone will just go out of service and then you'll have no calls. But on a North Star system, you can take your phone off the hook all day long and people can just still call you and your phone will still ring. It might ring a little bit softer, but it's still ringing. That's normal volume. So what to do, what to do? Well, you have this wonderful code called Do Not Disturb, feature 85. And you can see that we are now off hook over here. So, Do Not Disturb benefits us in a couple different ways. First of all, let's put all of these phones in Do Not Disturb. And let's get an incoming call. As you can see, they're not ringing. They're flashing. And I could answer it if I wanted to pick it up and press the button. Hello, your mom. But it basically has the effect of putting all the lines into appear only. Remember, lines can appear, they can ring, or they can ring and appear. And when they appear, they just flash if they're ringing, and you don't get to just pick up the phone automatically, you have to press the button. When the phone's in do not disturb mode, it says do not disturb instead of the static time. If you want to see what the... Mm, <laughs> to cancel do not disturb, just do a feature pound 85, and it says allow calls, and goes back to the normal time. If you call someone that's on do not disturb, after about a second, your display will say do not disturb. Their phone will still flash as if it's ringing, but it won't actually ring. Picking up the phone still requires pressing the intercom key. Hey, look, I know I'm on do not disturb, but I really wanted to get your call. <laughs> Another benefit of do not disturb is that phones on do not disturb do not get incoming pages. Notice how if I take this phone off do not disturb, it is immediately part of the page broadcast. As soon as I put it in do not disturb, the page is no longer coming out of the speaker. All right, let's go over some more feature codes. Let's start back at one because we went through all the star features and we did some common basic uh, telephony tasks, but let's start at feature one. Feature one is called send message and it's the most misleading feature of probably them all. Here's what send message does, you ready? You press feature one and it says message two, and you type in the number of another phone. So let's say 301. And it says that it sent a message to Matilda, and on Matilda it says message for you. And we have a soft button that says message. Well, what is the message? Well, if we press the message button, it says Montel called. We can call back, or we can erase. The interesting thing here is that Montel didn't call. The message is an assumption, it's an insinuation. Basically what this really means is directed voicemail indication. On analog phones, there's something called voicemail indicator. It's a protocol standard similar to caller ID that basically tells subscriber phones that there's a voicemail waiting. If they have a caller ID unit or a similarly equipped phone, a light usually comes on and lets them know that they have voicemail with the phone company that needs to be checked. And then when they check it, it goes off. Well, in the North Star system, we have the same thing, except it's actually directed. The voicemail indicator isn't so much a voicemail, but it's a, a message that comes from anything. It could come from the voicemail system or it could just come from a regular user. 
In this case, it came from a regular user. A lot of times, this is just a voicemail indicator from the voicemail system, and the message is actually coming from the voicemail's phone number. I'll show you that when we go over voicemail. If you press the soft button for call, it basically just calls Montel back. Erase erases the message. Next goes to the next message, and if there's no more messages, it says no more messages. Let's call Montel again. Two soft phone buttons that have always been here that I've never really explained are priority and later. I'm gonna go over priority later, but I'm gonna go over later now. If you press later, you have two options. Ring again, yes, no, and exit. And if you say no, you get the option to send a message, yes and no. And if you say yes, it sends a message to Montel. The same as if I had pressed feature one, feature one, add, Montel. Notice that on the two-line display, when I pressed feature one, I had the option to see my messages, because I still have one from Montel. Actually, that's a lie. Fuck. Notice that when you press feature one on a phone that has a two-line display, you not only have the option to send a message, you also have the option to show the messages you've sent. These are not messages that have been sent to you. I erased the message that Montel sent me. This is my message to Montel that is still pending. If I press the erase key, you can see that Montel's message disappears. Let's go ahead and add it again. On the one-line display phone, we can retrieve the message because we don't have the message key here by hitting feature 65. And you can see that it says Matilda called. I can press pound to see if there's more messages. There are none more. There are no more. I can erase that message by pressing the hold button, or I'll send another one. Or I can erase all messages by pressing feature pound 65. Likewise, on the one-line display phone, if I send a message, I can undo it because I don't have the ability to see which messages I've sent. I can undo it by doing feature pound one, and I get cancel for, and I can say 301, and the light goes out over there as well. One more time, message 2301, cancel for 301, I'm sorry, cancel for 301. That is messaging. Here's a quick example of how it works in the real world. Shut the fuck up. I hate you. I hate you. Shut the fuck up. Thank you. You can see here, once I leave Do Not Disturb, that we have a message. And the message is from the voicemail system. I can call the voicemail system back and hear my message. This was a message from earlier. Shut the fuck up. I hate you. I hate you. Shut the fuck up. Thank you. That's just an example of how the message is usually used. The other feature I want to go over in today's part is Ring Again. Ring Again is feature two. Um, however, we saw it earlier when we were calling Montel and we pressed the later button. And it said a ring again, yes or no. So let's hit yes. And you can see it says ring again on. Well, what the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. So let's take a look here. Ring again is a very interesting feature because there's three different circumstances under which it's helpful. And it's invoked two different ways. The first way that it's invoked is when you're calling someone. So for example, let's call Montel here. And let's do feature two. And ring again is on. What this means is that I'm going to be notified anytime Montel's state becomes available. So let's say Montel goes off hook to call his mom, and then he hangs up. Do I want to call Montel? No. Let's say I do the same thing. I call Montel and I do ring again because Montel's not answering. One interesting thing is that if Montel makes any move, if he presses so much as any key, including the feature key, I'm notified. The other benefit is that if Montel is on do not disturb and I set ring again, even though Montel basically has privacy and can press all the buttons he wants because he's technically off hook, the second he goes off do not disturb, he is now notified. You are now notified. I know my fingers are dirty, it's because I'm eating chocolate. Eww. The other interesting thing, by the way, is that while it's in this call Montel state, the intercom key is flashing. As if it's tying the notification back to that key. 
And sure enough, when you say, yeah, that's the key that's gonna get used. The other place where ring again becomes helpful is when you're waiting for a free line. Let's say Bob over here is on the phone with his mom on Holt 2. And Roberta over here is on the phone with his dad on Holt 1. Let's say all the lines are in use. And you go to dial an outside call by dialing your external access code. And you have no free lines. Well, hey, look, here's this layer thing again. And it turns out that in this particular case, we can also do a ring again. And ring again is now on. So what that means is that the next time one of these lines becomes available in the line pool that we were trying to use when this occurred, do we want to use the line pool? Yeah, damn right we want to. And now we have a free line. Let's call Grandma. Booyah. Thank you for calling in Sierra. Shut up, Mom. And we're going to go over one last feature today, and that is call forward. Call forward may sound like a very simple thing, but it's a very dangerous thing. Let's talk about call forward. Call forward is feature four. You press feature four, it says forward two, you dial an extension, and then it's set. Let's say I want to forward to Montel. I do that, it says forwarding to Montel, and that's the end of it. You'll notice that on a two-line display you have a cancel button here. The cancel button is the same thing as feature pound for. I'm going to temporarily assign the feature call forward to this blank button here because I want to show you what happens when you assign it to a button. When you assign it to a button, and we're going to forward to Montel, the call forward symbol appears on that button. I can cancel call forwarding by pressing that button. The other thing I want to show you is that, let's change that back to Montel. If Montel starts forwarding his call someplace, you can see that his indicator now shows the call forwarding symbol. The other interesting thing is that if you do call Montel, after a second you'll see that your call is being forwarded to Deshaun. It literally says, calling Montel. Montel to Deshaun, then calling Deshaun. There's this three-stage ruse, even though Deshaun's phone was ringing the entire time. Let's look at it again. Yes, Deshaun's phone is ringing right now, and Montel's is not. The entire time, that is exactly what's happening. That three stages of that display is there just as a ruse. Over on Montel's phone, you can see that he's forwarding to Deshaun, and if I call him... You can see that it, it, it's as if he's in Do Not Disturb mode. He could pick it up if he wanted to. And Montel has picked up the call that was deferred to Deshaun. Call forwarding, in a nutshell. I didn't mean to do that. Alright, here's some interesting things to note. Firstly, when you use call forward, you can press a button of an auto dial instead of dialing the code. Secondly, if someone's calling you, as is the case here, you cannot necessarily see who's calling you because it acts as if it's a peer only. If you want to see who's calling you, you have to press feature 811 and hit the flash and call and you can see that, oh shit, Darnell's trying to call me, maybe I should answer it. Hey Darnell, what do you want, man? Let's wreak some havoc. What if we're forwarding to Montel and Montel forwards back to us? Forward denied. Alright, let's say Montel forwards to... Hmm. That's actually interesting. I can't forward to a phone that's in Do Not Disturb. Darnell is in Do Not Disturb. We're going to have to allow calls. And now Montel should be able to forward to Darnell. Very interesting. By being in Do Not Disturb, you block new forwards. But you'll notice that Matilda's forwarded to Montel. Montel's in Do Not Disturb. That's because Montel said Do Not Disturb after that was forwarded. Also, your mom. Also, your mom. Furthermore, now let's get creative. This phone is forwarded to this phone. And this phone is forwarded to that phone. Let's call this phone. So here's what you can tell. Here's what we observe. The phone that we dialed is flashing, but not ringing. The phone in the middle is neither flashing nor ringing. And the phone at the end of the forwarding chain is flashing and ringing. Thank you. So what we can surmise is that the dialed number has the opportunity to intercept the call the ultimately, the ultimate destination is the one that actually rings, and any other links in the chain neither flash nor ring nor have the ability to intercept the forward. I still can't forward in a loop. 
Let's try one link bigger. Let's try forwarding this to Deshaun, and let's try having Deshaun forward back to... Nope. Some other interesting tricks. You can forward to a direct dial. So there are what are called direct dial numbers. For example, in our case, zero. Directly dials a hunt group, which calls all the phones, and you can forward to that. And let's see what forwarding to a hunt group looks like. Let's call our phone. You can see that on the hunt group recipients, it looks like Darnell is calling the hunt group directly. To Darnell, it looks like he's calling Matilda directly. He has no idea he's being forwarded. And as always, the forwarding phone has full authority to intercept the transfer, in which case it seems like Matilda was called. However, if you call Matilda, it's very possible that Montel might answer because it's really forwarding to a hunt group, even though you can't tell. We can also forward to a line pool. And then we can start dialing digits, like 800 444 okay? And you can see that it collapses down with an ellipse on the screen. And let's try dialing that phone from over here and see what happens. You can see that the calling phone briefly, let's do it again, briefly got to see what the number was. And that it's now going out on line two. Our system indicates you are calling from three, one. And the forwarding phone did not see a thing. Also of note, a special nice touch, is that there's a forward number soft key which shows you the entire number. And from there you can cancel the forward. You can also forward over routing codes and all sorts of other things that we'll discuss later on when we get into the nitty gritty. Before we leave the topic of forwarding, I just wanted to make one brief uh, observation about phones that are not in service. If you try to forward to a phone that's not in service, there's a brief delay while the system tries to reach the phone, and then it says not in service. However, what you can do is you can very easily forward your phone. Let's forward it to the hunt group. And then go out of service. And the system will remember that your phone is forwarded. And when I call Montel, it still forwards to everyone else. Which is a very convenient way to get around having someone show up as not in service while they're being moved or... Main, put in maintenance or anything like that. That's it for this part. On the next part, we're going to go over even more feature codes.